Alright, in this lesson we're going to take a look at how we can animate the timing and blending of constraints using the story window and constraint tracks. So let's go ahead and have a look at what we have in our scene. Let me jump to my producer perspective window. We've got our ninja character and he goes through this nice long animated sequence where we have a couple of cameras animated. And what I'm looking for is to take this second camera over here and I want to constrain that to an object inside the scene to create sort of a bullet time pan around right here during our bullet time kick. Now, given, I could use turntable, but as I mentioned earlier, sometimes if your camera is at an extreme angle, you might want to use you might not not want to use turntable because the disk of rotation of turntable might be uh, it will be at that rotation as well. So right. We're going to use a constraint to make this effect work, but we're going to need an object to constrain to. What I'm going to do is bring a null into the scene, constrain the camera to that null, and we'll use that constraint as a way to spin the camera around. So first thing, let me bring a null into our scene. I'll go into my asset browser, and under elements, we'll just grab a null, drag it in like so, and first thing, let me scale it up, because it is rather small. And rather than physically try to move it around to get it positioned right in the middle of the action, for this particular example, I'm just going to alt-drag it right onto the camera's interest, like so. We'll select Align, Translation, All, and that'll snap it right to the location of the camera's interest, which, if you noticed, is pretty much right in the middle of this kick and should work just fine. So now we need a constraint in place to constrain this camera to the null. So, under my asset browser, underneath constraints, I'm going to grab a parent-child constraint and drag it into the scene. Now, for more information on how constraints work, we actually have a VTM at 3dbuzz.com over constraints and motion builder, so be sure and download that if you, uh, if you need more information. Alright, so I need a new window to access the settings for this constraint. So, under window, let's add asset settings. And I'll just go under my scene browser and double click my parent child constraints, make sure I unlock the pane first. And we'll lock it back so I don't accidentally deselect it. And we'll resize it a little bit so it's kind of out of the way. Now, the parent in this relationship is going to be our null. Because he is going to force rotation upon the camera. So the camera is going to be the child. Now, I need to move the camera into the exact location that I want it to be when the constraint goes active. So what I'll do is I'll right click, make this camera current, and really all I want to do is just zoom in a little bit, maybe rotate up to a higher angle, maybe something right about here. So we have a, kind of a nice above look. Now, in order to move that camera around, I needed to have animation active over here. So it looks like I just placed a keyframe. So just be aware of that. For this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and switch off auto key. And then we'll position our camera one more time without placing any kind of a keyframe. So just be aware of that. If you've activated auto key, you're going to want to switch it back off for just for a moment. Now let's come in here under our constraint settings, and I'm going to snap this constraint into place. What that'll do is activate the constraint, but keep the initial offset between the null and the camera. Basically, it keeps the camera from jumping to the exact same location as the null. With that, I'm done with this window, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. Let's go back to our producer perspective window. And there's a slight problem with this animation. So let me play it back, and Joel, why don't you tell me what it is? Um, it's no longer panning. The camera's no longer moving. Exactly. This camera is now locked into position. Yeah, the, the interest is moving fine, but... Exactly, but the camera itself isn't. Why do you think that is? Well, the constraint is applied to the camera the whole time. Exactly. This constraint is always active right now. So, wouldn't it be cool if we had a way to turn that, ca that constraint on and off? That would be nice. Yeah, that was my, my goofy, cheesy segue into the constraint Shake tracks. Tracks. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, though, is I'm going to switch off Animate for this particular camera track. I'm going to right-click, Insert a Folder. Let's rename this folder to Camera Animation. Just to clean things up again. I can't type right now, so That's there okay. we go. Camera Animation, and we'll drag both of our camera animations up inside of that and minimize it to get it out of the way. Now, I need access to that constraint that I just put in. So here it is inside of our Scene Browser. And check this out, I'm just going to alt-drag it over here inside of Story. It automatically gets its own constraint track, and voila. Now, watch this. 
just something uh, a little interest, uh, something interesting for you to kind of try to wrap your head around. If I rewind the animation and hit play, look at this. And then, pow, the camera snaps. Why so, do you during that clip, it's constrained, and it after it leaves the clip, it's no longer constrained. Exactly. This, ca this particular clip is kind of like a Boolean. It's on or off. As long as the timeline indicator is inside this clip, the constraint is active. As soon as timeline goes outside this clip, constraint deactivates. Cool. So now we have a way by which we can take this constraint, we can scale it to adjust how long it lasts, and we can slide it along the timeline to control when it happens. So now we have complete control over when this constraint takes place. So what I'm going to do is open up the ninja's animation, and we'll find this one little slow motion section. Let me go ahead and shrink this up a little bit to make some room. Right about here should be our bullet time clip. So let's scrub forward and just double check that. Right here, he goes into bullet time. That is exactly the time that I want this constraint to be active. So for now, let me take the constraint and I'll just scale it down to make it kind of small. And we'll zoom in here on this clip. I'm going to set the timeline indicator right at the beginning of this clip and then just butt the constraint right up against the timeline indicator. Slide the timeline indicator to the end of the clip and again just scale out the constraint so that now we're only constrained during the bullet time kick. So you can see it, the camera. Let me zoom in just to make sure everybody can see that nice and easy. Right as we go into bullet time, the camera jumps. And then it jumps back as soon as it fades back out. Very cool. So, let's go ahead and animate our null real quick so that we can inc have our, you know, our bullet time pan around effect. So for now, let's go ahead. I'm going to take my constraint track and we'll just scale it up a little bit. We don't really need the weight anyway, and that should be plenty of room. I'm going to grab my null and just alt-drag it down inside of story so it gets its own animation track automatically. Also, I'm going to switch auto key back on because that'll make this uh, particular task a great deal easier. Now, let's bring our timeline indicator to the beginning of this constraint, like so. Uh, I'm going to activate my animate button, and I'm going to place my initial keyframe. Then, I, all I need to do is just slide to the end of this constraint, and we just need to rotate the null around. So we'll send it to about here, and let's get our rotate tool out and I'll just rotate around. You see a keyframe was automatically placed. Let's bring it all the way around. About like so. Ah, that'll look, that looks good. Now let's go ahead and switch off animate and we'll scrub back through and we can see the camera rotate around our character in a really snazzy kind of bullet time way. Now Very let's cool. go ahead and make the camera active and see what that looks like. So the camera is now current Let's uh, scroll back through really quick. I'm going to come through really slow. The camera snaps in. We rotate around in bullet time. Uh, very nice. Very cool, but there's still a problem. Snapping. Snapping. We d I mean, that is so... It's cool that we can do this, but it's very ugly to have the camera just pop right up here. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just fade right into this? That would be nice. Another cheesy segue into <laughs> fade in and fade out. So what I'm going to do is take my fade in handle of this constraint track. Let me kind of scale this up so everybody can see it a little easier. This little yellow fade in handle, I'm just going to drag in like so, and this will control how we fade into this constraint. So now it's no longer just snapping on. Watch this. We gently slide over into position of the constraint. Smooth. So let's go ahead and also fade out of it as well. And we fade right back out of it. Cool. So let me go ahead and I'm going to switch to models only. And I'm going to rewind this animation and we'll watch it all the way through with this camera. So our ninja comes through running. We watch him do his backflip. He goes into his crouch. He starts kicking, one kick, and two, two kicks. kicks, and then right here we're going to go into bullet time, and Aww. fade back Impressive. out, and everything's all set. So really with that, we've shown how we can take constraints and animate their time on and off, how we can fade into and out of them, all using the story window. So with that, that's going to wrap up this lesson. Thanks a lot, everyone.